Hey YouTube family, it's Sarah, less of Sarah. I'm back from vacation. I missed you guys. I know it's only been like two weeks since I posted a video, but it seems like forever. Um, you guys probably didn't notice though, right? <laughs> uh, I'm not polluting your video feed, which was great. Although I probably will start again, but for the last two weeks you got a break. So I am back from my vacation. Um, for those of you who don't know, uh, we were in, I was with my parents and my children. Uh, we did sort of a family vacation. We were in Florida for a few days. Um, and then we went on a cruise on a Carnival Breeze, which is a beautiful ship. Totally recommend it. Um, and we went to Grand Turk, uh, Dominican Republic, Aruba, and Curacao. Um, we had questionable weather, actually, for a lot of the trip, but honestly, it was beautiful. We had a great time. Uh, the only bummer was that while we were in Florida, I was hoping to get together with some people, and it just didn't really pan out because my parents and my kids were really demanding of my time and wanted to do a bunch of different things and I just couldn't fit it in which sucked so I'm sorry to you guys that are in uh the Fort Lauderdale Miami area um I wish I could have hung out with you so um hopefully I can make it happen at some other time we will actually be back in the Fort Lauderdale area in September of next year um because we're going on a cruise then as well so you never know but you may have to wait till then <laughs> Um, so yeah, the, overall the trip was really good, I had lots of fun, it was relaxing. Um, I know you guys are probably wondering, did I lose, did I maintain, or did I gain while I was on vacation? Um, sorry, my nose is running because I'm sick. Yay! Um, <laughs> I will do the actual numbers tomorrow when I do my weekly update, um, but if you watch to... I don't know if I'm going to do it at the end, but later on in this video, I will uh, reveal what happened because what I think is more important is talking about how I ate and all of that stuff and then what I felt might happen with my weight and then we can talk about what actually happened because I think that's probably the valuable part. I don't think it really matters to you guys whether, you know, exactly how much I lost or gained or maintained <laughs> um, if you don't get the idea of why that was. So, um... Let's talk about eating. I made a video talking about sort of my plan, which was to stick to, you know, pretty much what I normally do, protein first, all that stuff, but to not really make myself feel like deprived and to try to use the one bite rule when I wanted to try something um, and to try and get, you know, a little bit more exercise if I could. Um, so let's start with exercising actually. Did I exercise? No, I did not. Uh, I promised myself that I was going to, at least on the days that we were at sea and not busy in port, um, go and walk the track on the ship. Didn't happen. Didn't even happen one time. Um, you know what? I have to own that. I, uh, I just didn't feel like it. I just didn't feel like it. Sorry. It was, I was on vacation and I wasn't in the mood. I had other things to do, whether it was sleeping or going to something or whatever. So didn't do it. I uh, definitely walked around in some of the ports that we were in, did a lot of swimming, did all that sort of stuff, um, but on purpose exercise, I did zero except for one day um, before the cruise when we were in the hotel and I uh, was on the treadmill for like 45 minutes, but other than that, none. So that certainly didn't contribute. <laughs> um, as far as eating goes, I think I pretty much stuck to what I had said I was going to do, except for one thing. I said that I wasn't going to track on the cruise. I lied. I totally did anyway, because I am that crazy and anal retentive that it made me feel better to track as well as I could. Um, it's very hard to track properly because you have no control over what you're eating. Um, and my husband's phone is ringing, sorry. <laughs> um, you have no control over what you're eating and you don't know exactly what's going into it. So I could only guess at um, the quantities and you know all that sort of stuff. But I wanted to just get a general idea so that when I knew what the outcome was with my weight, I could kind of go back and see. Um, so if you're my friend on my fitness pal, um, and actually, I don't even think, I think I made my my diary totally public, which means you don't even have to be my friend to see it. Um, if you go to my Fitness Pal uh, page, and there's a link below, um, you can see how I ate while I was on vacation. Um, 
it's not very impressive, I'll tell you guys that much, but uh, I did pretty much track everything as much as I could. Um, and I probably averaged, I would say, 1,100 to 1,300 calories a day. Um, my carbs were definitely higher. Um, they weren't crazy high most days. I, I think there was one day it was over 100, um, but that was it. Uh, my fat was a lot higher. Uh, I don't really worry about that though, but but along with the higher calories, um, a lot of that was fat. Um, that's, I mean, that's a big increase in calories. I normally am under 900. So, you know, that was like a 25 to 40% increase in calories on a daily basis for two weeks. Um, so that made me a little bit nervous uh, about what would happen with my weight because of that. Um, as far as what I ate, I tried to make good choices um, in general for the main part of my meal. Um, but I did do a lot of trying other people's food. Um, I pretty much, in most cases, kept it to one bite. Um, I think there was only one time that I really kind of felt like I lost control. Um, we went to, there's a specialty restaurant on the ship called Cucina del Capitano. It's Italian and uh, first of all, I, that meal was just a disaster in so many ways and I'm not 100% sure why but I was, I was pretty stressed that day and uh, I was having some interpersonal issues with my father during that meal and, I, and I, I honestly think that was screwing with me and I don't know whether I was, it was emotional eating or what but first of all I ate too much of that meal to the point where I thought I was going to vomit. Like I literally had to leave the table. Um, and you guys know I've never vomited after surgery, so I had to leave the table. I had some foamy action, but it was okay. Uh, I went back, and everybody had, was ordering dessert. Fine, no problem. I didn't order dessert. Um, I figured I would just try whatever they were getting. Um, so they were, ended up ordering, like, one of each of the four desserts and then kind of sharing. And uh, there was this apple crostada, like an apple pie, and it was so good. I probably ate, I would say, a third of it. How in the hell I actually fit it in my sleeve, I don't even know. Like, I literally don't know how it even fit because I was feeling like I was going to vomit from the amount of food that I ate, and then I ate that. I have no idea. Um, but it was, it was, it was just, it was like overwhelmingly delicious, and I just kept putting it in my mouth, and, uh... I ate more of it than I needed to, for sure. Um, but I will say that I enjoyed it. I just didn't enjoy the fact that I really couldn't stop myself in a way. It was, I don't know, weird. That doesn't happen to me very often. But yeah, at this point, I'm just going to be like, whatever. We'll just let that go. Um, so yeah, how I ate. Um, when we were going out to restaurants, so when we were in Florida before the cruise and we were going out to restaurants or after the cruise as well, um, basically what I did in most places was order an appetizer um, because I didn't want to have leftover food. And so I tried to order an appetizer because it's less food and it generally is not going to come with carbs on the side. Um, so, and I tried to stick to chicken or seafood. Um, like shrimp and stuff like that. We went to Cheesecake Factory a couple of times and I had what I described as one of the best things I've put in my mouth since surgery. And I wasn't lying. It's a ahi tuna carpaccio. And it is delicious. It's thinly sliced raw tuna. Um, it's just like on a plate, like covering the plate. Um, and then they put like a Japanese mayo on with a sesame oil and soy dressing. Um, and then a, a bit of like fresh avocado. It is to die for. Delicious. Great protein. The whole plate, which has to be probably five ounces, and yes, I actually ate the whole thing. Not the first time, but the second time I had it, I actually ate the whole thing. Um, I think because it's a, a really soft protein, um, it has amazing um, stats. It's I think the whole thing, the dish was like 260 calories. Um, fantastic. Highly recommended if you're at Cheesecake Factory and you like tuna. Um, well, you like raw fish anyway. Um, so yeah, that's what I did and then generally worked out okay. There were a few times I ate things that I didn't think were awesome, but they were there. It was all right. Um, most places I was able to find something that was a, a fairly decent choice, so I, I didn't find that difficult. Um, on the ship, I generally didn't eat breakfast in the buffet and normally just did a protein shake or a protein bar in the room. Um, lunchtime generally was the buffet and I would just choose my protein choices and maybe have a bite or two of something else, a little coleslaw or 
a little bit of salad, whatever. Um, dinner time, the dinners are multi-course dinners. I generally would choose um, just an appetizer and a main course. I didn't really have dessert. There were a couple nights I had dessert. Um, they have a sugar-free dessert every night, but I don't really think they're that good. So to me, it's not really worth it. But um, there's a couple that I do like. They have, they have a coconut cake that they make that's sugar-free. I really like that. So um, yeah, a couple nights I did have dessert. Um, but normally it was just an appetizer and a main course. The appetizers are very small. Um, cruise ship food these days, the portions are small. They're not huge. So I could generally get through the appetizer and part of the main course. Um, usually I'd probably eat about half of the protein in the main course. Maybe a couple bites of vegetables or whatever. Maybe a bite of the potato or whatever it was. And then give the rest away to someone else at the table. So that worked out okay too. Um... I did have a little bit of ice cream a couple of times. They have like soft serve ice cream. Oh, good. Um, again, not a lot, but just a little bit on a couple of days. Um, they have specialty hamburgers on this ship. Um, they're Guy Fieri hamburgers. So good. I desperately wanted to eat one. There was no way I could ever eat one. Um, half a burger probably wouldn't have even have happened. So I had to settle for like a bite of my husband's on two different days because... Um, I did stuff like get uh, burritos or tacos and take out the middle part, like the meat part or the shrimp or whatever it was. Um, yeah, I honestly think, and I don't think this is just Carnival, I think any cruise line, it's pretty easy to make good choices and to find proteins and, and all that stuff. So if you are thinking about going on a cruise or going on a cruise soon, um, really it's more of a mental issue for you. It's more of a control issue um, than it is a choices issue. There are going to be good choices. So... Um, yeah, that was good. So I talked about eating, talked about exercise. What else did I want to talk about? Sorry, I have to go to the notes. Uh, oh, NSVs. So I had lots of NSVs. The last time I went on a cruise was with uh, my friends and it was in September of last year. Uh, it was literally right before I had surgery. Um, right before I started, I, I came home from my cruise and started uh, my diet literally like six days later or five days later, my pre-op diet, um, self-imposed pre-op diet anyway. Um, and when I went on that cruise, I was literally at my highest weight, which is 460 pounds. Um, and it was also on carnival. So you can imagine that there was a big difference. Um, first of all, I fit in the bathrobe. I have never been able to wear a bathrobe in like a fancy hotel or on a cruise because they never fit because they're one size. Fits all, but that never fit me. And uh, I went in that room, put on the bathrobe, and it literally like folded over a good eight inches. And I was thrilled. Um, then I went out on the balcony and my butt fit in the tiny balcony chairs that they have. So I was excited by that. I had no problem fitting in any chair on that cruise, nor did I feel weird about sitting in a chair. I sat wherever I wanted. It was fantastic. Um, I fit... <sighs> I often used to worry about people like passing me on the stairs and stuff like that. Like some of the outside stairs on the decks, they're meant for people to pass each other. But yeah, if I was going up or down the stairs, tough luck. Cause you weren't going to be uh, fitting with me on the stairs, but um, now I can. Um, I just felt better, had more energy. I don't know. It was good. It was, um, it was, a great experience to uh to look back at prior vacations and then look at this one I mean even just only buying one seat and fitting the air belt, the seat belt fitting and the tray table going all the way down um all of that was awesome and amazing so yeah NSVs it was good it was good I really enjoyed our trip and um I mean certainly it's not the first time I've traveled even just recently um weighing less but um there was something special about this one being with my family and I kind of felt like you know I was pretty normal um and I realized looking around the ship that there were lots of people who were bigger than me and smaller than me but that I didn't stick out on this cruise I was you know just like everyone else and that was new and exciting I won't lie. It was really exciting. So there was something that came up and I'm going to make a separate video about it because I, yeah, I don't think it kind of fits in with this, but um, I just wanted to give you guys the update. 
I'll have another video shortly and I will see you guys tomorrow.